Hey guys, it's Ollie with the Reptile Den. Today on the podcast, we have Patty Message, owner of Isotopia, known for breeding the highest quality isopods. Patty's childhood love for turtles and isopods inspired her to revolutionize reptile care through bioactive setups. Her expertise has made Isotopia a leader in the industry. So let's dive in. All right. All right. So I'm with Patty Message of Isotopia. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. So I'm really excited to interview you. You do something really unique where with Isotopia, you breed isopods. We breed isopods and we got some millipedes and lots of accessories too for your bioactive stuff. So why would somebody want isopods? You mentioned uh, for bioactive enclosures. Well, number one, they make great pets for kids because they don't require lighting or heat. So they're very user friendly. For some reason, all children love them. You know, who doesn't love a roly poly, <laughs> right? And for bioactive, it's cool because they work together with your enclosure to eat the leftovers and the feces and stuff and it makes maintenance a whole lot easier that is so cool so people are keeping them as pets but as well they use them for like enclosure cleanup mm -hmm. and they could also be a feeder source too, the fast breeders so for millipedes do people do bioactive setups with those too or are those pets only um, they will use them more for pets. Okay. I, I haven't dove into the bioactive part for them. I'm sure you probably could use them, but you can't mix them with roly polies because like cool. molting millipede will get injured then or worse, you know? That makes so. sense, right? When they're like really soft mm -hmm. or something. Exactly. So I know you have quite the operation at Isotopia and I didn't know this before you told me, but there are tons of different, tons of different kinds of isopods. So how many, how many species do you guys uh, work with and, and breed with, with your I have thing. about 180, 180. Ma maybe more honestly because when we find more we single them out we try to breed them see what they're going to produce you know constantly changing because there's all kinds of color variations because they inbreed a lot so you never know what's going to pop up so if you see something kind of crazy like you haven't seen pictures of other people doing <laughs> it's worth a chance to see what's going to happen you know so is it would you kind of compare it to like ball python morphs how there's a bunch of different colors are they like different species of isopods? It would be like the morphs. It's just all different morphs and yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. That is so cool. And are there, like, what what would be, like, the cheapest isopod? And is there, like, crazy designer, like, of course. Ex extremely expensive so, one? So it goes all the way from, like, the low end to the high end. So right. you have your feeder breeder cleanup crew. That's what everybody knows, like, your dairy cows. Okay, yeah. Your powder orange, your powder blue. That's going to be your fast producers. So people like them because if they get eaten, then you have plenty more regenerating. And then you go to like the armadillidium species, and those are going to be like your um, magic potions, your orange vigor. You're starting to get into like more colors, which don't get me wrong, there's so many color variations to begin with, even with the lower end species, but they just get more like saturated and more colorful. Um, like there's the Marilenas, pink Lambos, they're actually pink. They have pink spots, right. which is wild because how in nature do you get pink, you know? Right. So there's that. And then you got your higher end, like the Kubara species. And those are going to be more like, I mean, I guess if you're a baller and you want to spend the money to make them feed her, right. sure, you know, but more or less they're going to be your pets. <laughs> like you sub your terrarium, you put your stuff in there, just kind of watch them. Like I call it the fish tank theory. You put them sure. in there and you watch them and they're just so cool when they're like walking around peaceful. Well, yeah, that, that's just it. It's almost like an ant colony. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're so cool. I remember I got from you some orange ones. Mm -hmm. what, the powder orange. Powder orange. And I thought those were cool. And oh, they, yeah. They got pretty big, too. They do get some pretty big. Some of them are big. like the size of my like pinky nail, mm -hmm. I would say. They, mm -hmm. they definitely grew. Yeah. I'm so. sure you probably have thousands by now. <laughs> no, yeah. They, they reproduce. Yeah. <laughs> I still have the same. Um, I had got springtails from you, which mm -hmm. I highly recommend for people that are sound, even if your enclosure is maybe not necessarily 100% bioactive, definitely introducing springtails. But... I was able to keep some on the side, and I have like my own springtails yeah. culture kind of reproducing to to take from when I'm setting up other little enclosures. And um, they, I mean, they really work at, at taking care of all the mm -hmm. waste and that sort of thing. Yeah, because they kind of go like hand in hand. So like the ice pods eat the leftovers and the poop. The springtails do the mold and that. Like they're not miracle workers, but no, they obviously no. make a huge difference. Well, that's no just matter it. what. If, if your enclosure has like underlying problems, that's mm -hmm. causing you know, excess fungus gnats or something like that. It's not like, I wouldn't say it's not like going to miraculously fix it, but it definitely is awesome to have just to keep the upkeep going. And you do clean less. I find myself cleaning much Absolutely. less in my enclosures. Yeah. I mean, I have one box turtle tank. No joke. We haven't cleaned in over a year really? and it doesn't smell or anything. And when I, at night I go to change a water bowl, I just have 
you know, the, the, every nation species of isopod sure. chilling there and millions of springtails. Oh, wow. And, and the box turtles eat them. It's awesome because I'll be like, oh, I haven't fed them in a few days. I don't need oh, to. there you go. Yeah. <laughs> that is so funny. Can you cohabitate isopods? Is that a controversial It is a controversial topic. topic. It technically, I mean, you could do whatever you want, honestly. I don't recommend it. What kind of happened with that tank was that was the one, like, after shows when I'm emptying cups, just kind of throw in the scragglers. Sure. Oh, I don't know what you are. Just throw you in. You're a baby. Throw <laughs> you in. And that's how everybody's in there. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. What What are the cons? That it might, like, maybe muddy the the like, bloodline of they, they kind of, like, click up at that point. Okay. And they could kind of overcompete for one or another. So, like, it depends. But it's just going to be, like, casualties. That's your only con, basically. That's so cool. So... How did you even get into so how did you even get into the, the niche of isopods? So it's the dumb thing of when I was a kid, I used to love roly polies. I played with them. <laughs> and I was working a job and I eventually, you know, COVID hit, all this crazy stuff happened in the world, the world changed, and I was like, I'm gonna leave the job and I'm gonna start something different. And I've always been into turtles and tortoises. I'm, I'm like the self-proclaimed tortoise person. <laughs> so it just kind of went hand in hand. We went to an NARBC show and we picked some up. I had no clue what I was doing. Because even as a kid, didn't know they were crustaceans, didn't know they needed moisture. Mm -hmm. So we got like zebras, Spanish orange, and I think like powder blue. And I just put them in these little tubs and completely forgot about them like an idiot. And then all of a sudden there's like two, three left. I'm like, oh my God, why are they dead? <laughs> because I wasn't feeding them properly because I didn't sure. know about the moisture. So then next time uh, the show came around, we got more. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh, these guys are kind of cool actually. You know, did a lot of reading and research and started getting into it. And then next thing you know, I have like two little shoebox size containers. And then I got like the shoe racks and I have like 20 species. And I'm, I'm thinking I'm wow. something cool. And you know, ooh, 20 species, right? <laughs> Now you have 180 plus. Exactly, yeah. So were you keeping them as pets initially, or did you have an eye for maybe I can make this into a business? It was as pets initially. And then when they started reproducing, I'm like, um, now what? That is so cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. So what was it like then when you guys had your first show that you do? Like, did you have, okay, these are like the set of isopods we're going to bring? So I knew because I was going to focus solely on isopods, I was going to try to bring as many species and variety for the people coming to the show as possible. And I think we were maybe like 35-ish, wow. which is a good amount in all honesty, because when you're cupping up so many pods, it takes three to four days, eight hour shifts basically. Oh, I was going to say, because they're tiny too. Exactly. I mean, I've been doing it so long, I could just kind of go through and handle it and stuff, <laughs> but it, it takes a lot of work for the yes. prop, definitely. How, how do you even transfer them? Do you literally just pick them out or if it's like dairy cows i'll like take a piece of the wood shake it off okay and then i'll let them walk i make them do the work on their own <laughs> i let them walk out <laughs> but go. the other ones i'll just do that basically because yeah. i'm really delicate with them how long ago was your guys first show that you sold at it was our first show was in countryside okay. and it was two two and a half years ago actually Oh, wow. So yeah. it's only been just a few years since yeah, you started. Yeah, because I, I was keeping them for like almost a year before I went live with it. Because wow. I wanted to make sure I had good supply and stuff and kind of right. knew what I was doing. So that was the game plan. Now, are all of these isopods, like, do people import in isopods or is it all just relatively, like, domestically? All of the above. Like, really? like the big name guys, some of the ones you see on the internet, they have the funds to import. Wow. So we're thankful for people like them because they bring the stuff in for all of us other people to right. get them. Sure. So how many shows, so since your guys' first show, how many shows do you guys do a year, you think? The first year we did a lot because we were testing the waters. We wanted to see like the markets, people's responses. Um, you know, obviously isopods are kind of oversaturated in a sense because people think they're easy. They can be easy if you maintain it. I, I've already seen so many people drop off already, unfortunately. Okay. Um, so it, it just depends. Like, we probably did maybe like 30 ish shows the first year, oh, I would wow. say. And then this year we haven't done that many because the summer market, for example, is really, really bad, for lack of a better word. Okay. Because people usually are vacationing or going out and doing stuff. So people just don't want to go sit in the hot room or. You know, sit there sure. not buying stuff because <laughs> with the economy and funds, there's just a lot of factors going into it. So, so we maybe... try to pick better shows and bigger shows usually. Okay, I see what you mm -hmm. mean. So I know you guys will be at Schomburg next month. We will. In July. Mm -hmm. That's going to be really cool. Mm -hmm. Is there any anything like new that you guys are bringing? Or... I'm going to try to focus maybe on some plants, just some basic stuff. Um, 
it, it just depends. Like I, I introduced live oak recently, more bioactive supplies, limestone. I got some friends that are supplying me with that so I could share it with people oh, in the wow. Midwest. Just trying to bring in more different things. So you not only sell the isopods, but you also sell supplies for them too? I sell basically everything except the bedding because the okay. bedding, you got to be specific with your blend and we haven't perfected it yet. So I don't want to have somebody get bedding and then God forbid it molds. I see. And I would feel bad. Sure. So we, we try to do everything, though, minus the bedding. So you said limestone, is it that mm-hmm. you guys... What what does that do for them? It's just like a calcium source. Like the Kubars, especially okay. the super high-end ones, they like to eat that. So it's helpful for them. Oh, okay. I mm-hmm. didn't know that. That's yeah. pretty cool. I would imagine, I guess, they need calcium. Just like reptiles, and... they need calcium. Sure. Yeah. So you mentioned that you have a bunch of turtles. Mm-hmm. How all did that start for you, for that to become like your favorite favorite reptile so it was the same thing being a kid in the 90s i love the teenage mutant ninja turtles <laughs> and donatello was my favorite and i was like when i'm older i want to have turtles that's awesome so i got a tortoise a russian tortoise his name is leviathan that's my son i joke and <laughs> then all of a sudden like all these unwanted turtles and tortoises kept coming to my house because everybody knew sure. that was the crazy turtle- oh, tortoise man. person and here we are <laughs> honestly I, like i'm in all the local like facebook groups and I've accumulated three Russian tortoises from just people not being able to take care of them anymore. And I've probably seen another three. Oh, I bet. But I already have three hutches right. for them because they can't live together. The I've females to, maybe, but yeah. Maybe. I mm-hmm. don't even know what all mine are, but they were all like duking it out when I had them together. So, so they were probably males. Probably, <laughs> probably. Probably. And I thought they were like the slowest, cutest things, but... They can really haul shell. They could haul, yeah. and they're mean too. They at can their be. Tactic, I mean, trying to flip each other over on their back. Oh, so you got all males for sure. Pro- probably. Mm-hmm. And I mean, they would like pursue each other too, like faster than I've ever... <laughs> Than I've ever seen them. So what? What all? Like what all reptiles do you have? So we have salamanders. We have Pac-Man frogs. We. My husband used to beard, breed bearded dragons, but that's a very time-consuming, spacious thing. Yeah, so I'm we sure eventually stopped that. We adopted a bunch out. That was several, several years ago. And now we have eastern box turtles, um, three-toed box turtles, Florida box turtles. Sulcata, a big sulcata, a Russian, several Russians, a Hermans, and Forstines. I'm probably missing a few. <laughs> wow. So how like how old is your sulcata that you have? My husband bought her when we first started dating, and he didn't know they were the fourth largest tortoise in the <laughs> world. And it was just like this big, like yeah, my palm, and now it's like this big. So oh she's goodness. probably like maybe 10 years old, I would say. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I would love to get a big tortoise, but... The Russians are definitely way better for my apartment life I love right the now. So and they're so cool. How mm-hmm. how old is your? Do you have like an oldest pet? Like that? it probably would be Leviathan the Russian. And how and old I, is And I I don't know how old he was when I got him, and I got him probably like twenty two years ago. So oh he I goodness. would guess he's probably like maybe forty, but who wow. knows? Because a lot of those were wild caught back in the day, and I'm no assuming kidding. he probably was. So. I don't know. No kidding. I thought mine was old. I have one that's like 16. Okay. That that we uh, had taken in from a lady, and I thought mm-hmm. that was really old. Whenever we do the shows, we make the kids like guess how old that's they think the tortoise idea. is, yeah. and older than all of them. <laughs> so, man, so anywhere between 22 and 40 years, you mm-hmm. reckon? Yeah. What is it like keeping... So you have some aquatic turtles, too? No, I don't do aquatics. Oh, okay. I got I, I don't... The water changes always That's seem, like, intimidating that. and stinky, so... Which, it's like, terrible. I know the bedding's stinky, too, but... We've got ice pods. Water, <laughs> there you go. That, that's perfect, right? Right. <laughs> they need to make, like, water... There's no like water isopods yet that take there care are. of. There are, there are, but I don't, really? I don't know how they work for cleanup crew. Oh my you know. Gosh. Yeah, really, right? <clears throat> I imagine like the deep sea isopods that are mm-hmm. like creepy that look like like right. face huggers. Right, like the lobster things. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. definitely. Man, yep. Yeah. So at home we have the crocodile mm-hmm. that we're permitted for with IDNR, and that's a 300 gallon pond. Oh my god! So the water changes on that are always a pain, and <laughs> we have to utilize like pumps and that kind of, of course. thing. Of course. So. What, um, so you, you have NARBC coming up. Mm-hmm. Are there any other like big shows that you try to target with Isotopia? We like, we always like the show me shows because okay, they, the they do them really well and, and we like the venues and stuff. So there's one in Janesville on the 6th. I think we're going to do that. Cool. But considering it's right after 4th of July, who knows how many people are out of town? Like it, it can be sure. hit or miss. So right. we're toying with that idea. We'll see. W- what is it like, like preparing <laughs> to do a show? Cause so we, we've done... We did like a county comic con show that mm-hmm. was that was relatively easy, and we're not really vending anything. But what what is it like when you guys are 
gearing up, getting ready to go set up at a show. I'm sure a lot goes into it that people don't necessarily see because they just see the the finished product of the table setup. And you guys have a really nice table setup Thank with you. the custom cloths and banners and, and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. But do you have to wake up like super early and mm-hmm. get everything ready? I mean, I usually start prepping. Like if a show's on a Saturday, I start prepping like Wednesday night. Wow. And I'll do it like in shifts. I'll do like four to six hours, eight hours. Because when we f- did our first show, I was like, I'm going to do this all in one night. <laughs> yeah, Terrible. went to their the show on like two minutes of sleep. Oh my! Gosh. You know it was a disaster. So it's not feasible. So I recommend if anybody's like gonna do a show and they're wanting to know the tricks, start doing it in advance. So like I'll pack like Wednesday, Thursday, and then I'll I'll pack the lower end stuff on the first day okay. because if it perishes, then it's lower end. And I'll pack the really fancy, expensive stuff on the last day, like the Friday night before, because it's obviously more delicate too. So I I pack for like a few days ahead and. You know, it's like you're making up your own price list. You're making up right. your your advertisements. It's a lot goes into it, honestly. And like we had no help when we started. I sometimes can't believe that I did this all from scratch. You know. <laughs> well, that's just it. And when you're running these small businesses, not only are you having to do all of that at hand, but you're also doing all your social media, mm-hmm. all of your correspondences. Right. You have to wear so many hats. Mm-hmm. But honestly, it's like the most fulfilling thing when you see like the um result of all your efforts right when it's when... definitely awesome to see what you've created no doubt that is so cool so is there ever like any like beef with other isopod breeders <laughs> at the shows like you know i've never been <laughs> involved in anything and that's kind of like our motto we try to stay professional we always i say i'm switzerland i'm neutral with everybody and okay. i'm gonna be friends with everybody because i don't want to have any problems because sure. there's no point because how many people like i'm sure in the reptile world too you see there's always drama or there's things going on yeah i just back off i do our thing i just want to make people happy and clean tanks that's so funny wow yeah it'll be interesting see well and then i guess you have to do all that uh prep work for the show and then you go to the show and you're there all day too Mm -hmm. it's like an all-day event it's like a long weekend (laughs) it's a very long weekend it'll be really interesting i'm really (laughs) excited for any rbc i've gone for so many years Mm -hmm. just attending i've never you know, set up as a, as a vendor there, but I think yeah. it's going to be really cool. I've never done a multi-day mm-hmm. event either. so It's a lot of fun. I mean, it's a lot of work, but it's really rewarding. Do you ever do the, like, the Scott Smith shows or I've anything I've done like a that? few, but it's very saturated for isopods. Okay. So for me, honestly, it's not really worth it financially. I gotcha. Yeah. Well, do you ever have to factor that into, like, booth rental and, Absolutely. and that kind of thing? Absolutely. Yeah. Because, like... That was the thing. When we first started, I'm kind of prissy. I was like, oh, we need to get a hotel. And then you factor in all your costs, your gas, your food, your lodging. So this year, we're like, we're just driving there. We're not going to waste money on hotels just because if you do bad at a show, what do you come across? Like $100? It's not even worth it at that point, honestly. You know, three days of prep and all that. Rather stay at home and chill and work with the pods and the uh, turtles, you know? (laughs) Right. I mean, there's always work to do. (laughs) Exactly. So... That is really interesting. That's what I'm the most excited for is is the shows. So, do you have any kind of exciting like breeding projects going on now? Is there any kind of species that you haven't worked with before that you have now? Not necessarily. I mean, like the higher end stuff can be hit or miss because sometimes you think probably the bloodlines if your things aren't breeding properly could be bad bloodlines or just genetics. Sure. You don't know. So, you just they, they basically breed on their own honestly you know I, I don't i haven't really dove much into like the morphs and doing my own stuff with that because i just have so much going on you know i have a small child and i have all the turtles so i know it sounds crazy but i am busy <laughs> <laughs> well no i mean yeah everybody has stuff going on that that's mm-hmm. for sure so cool so you have the the ice pods 180 species how many species are there that that are like commonly known, treated. I mean, in the world, there's known there's ten thousand, oh which I, I'm sure there's so many undiscovered ones because so many come from like Thailand and I'm sure and Asia. Like that's where all the really cool ones come. There's probably so many that we don't ever know about and ever will. So keeping 180 species, they fit in about kind of like are your colonies like sh- shoebox size? How do you have to house them for you know to sell them later on? Because I'm sure you can't have something too small of a container right everything's gonna be like that those six quart bins basically okay. I and see. then like the smaller species like there's micro species like i call them the turbos mm-hmm. the scientific name i can't pronounce it because i kind of suck at some sure, of those yeah i'm terrible so, so the they're names. like they're like teeny so i'll have them in like smaller bins but like my dairy cows i have in bins longer than this table 
Really? Yeah. And I, I have multiple because I also I supply wholesale to a lot of places. Oh, so really? So I, I have a lot of things going on with bins, big bins. No kidding. Mm-hmm. So you have individual bins, not necessarily like really, really gigantic. Like, do you have one giant bin and that's all of your dairy cows? Or, or I is it probably, all of the six quarter? I probably have maybe 10 giant bins of dairy cows because dairy cows are a fan favorite. They're like the most, is that like the most common? And the powder blue and the powder orange always. Because sure. that, that's usually what people hear of. Yeah, And, that's and what rubber I was duckies say. are always popular. I've Everybody loves the too. rubber duckies. What people don't know with the rubber duckies, they're expensive because they have really small broods and they okay. breed really slow. So honestly, like for Isotopia, we release a cup of six count rubber duckies maybe once every two to three shows. Really? So usually I'll post about, I'll be like, okay, one lucky winner is going to buy these guys because they're just, <laughs> they're really slow. No kidding. Yeah. I, so I didn't know that. So that obviously probably adds into the desirability, mm-hmm. the ones that, so there's isopods that breed much slower. Correct. Wow. Yeah. And can you, can you keep them all the same relatively, like in a bin with some moist substrate and I mean, fish flakes every and stuff, species or? respectively to their own bin, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, basically the same room temperature stuff. Some like it more humid. Sure. So we add more vents. It's all going to be based on humidity, ventilation, temperatures. Like, I have an enclosed rack that we built. So, like, my fancier stuff is in the enclosed rack then. Wow. And then we have, like, the screen front. And if it's, like, hot, like it's been the last few weeks here, yes. I'll open the doors on it so they get more ventilation. And right. I'll check them more frequently, too. Wow. So 180 species. Are you planning on, on scaling anytime soon? Probably not. I'm just going to keep going big or go home. <laughs> there you go. Wow. That is really cool. What? So there's some that have small broods. So there there's some isopods that you're only selling maybe every every few shows. Mm-hmm. They'll, they'll be available. And and a six count, too, at, at that. Is, right. What is the perfect for somebody that is, say, somebody has, you know, most common, you know, ball python enclosure, 55-gallon or 75-gallon. How many... You know what? What should they get if if they want to introduce some isopods or springtails? Is there like a perfect starter colony size that they could introduce? So, or I mean, it's going to be based on your setup. Like, what? Okay. I'll ask you, what's your bedding? Do you? Is it humid? How humid is it? So, like, you know, it's always the cliche. Oh, it's aspen bedding. Pods aren't going to live on that. I was going to say, right? You know? That is so dry. Right. So it just depends on what your setup is because sometimes if people like don't have the proper setup. If they're willing to like change the animal could survive in that, then we'll try to educate and work together. If it's not something that's feasible, then sorry, pods probably aren't for your thing, you know? Mm-hmm. But like with snakes, usually we'll do like maybe a giant canyon or something because they, they're kind of bulletproof. They could do arid. Okay. They could kind of handle humidity. It just depends on what your parameters are for your tank setup. So I think a lot of people don't know that, that there are probably better <laughs> tailored isopods for whatever application that you're doing. So... Um, so the best would be, and the only way to find that knowledge is probably to go directly to the seller like yourself right. to explain, look, I have this very arid enclosure. Mm-hmm. I have this very humid enclosure. Like what would be the best animal for, for me to get? And I think that's something that you won't find, um, you know, online with like a faceless right. business, right? Or if you go to, to like to PetSmart, you're just like, Absolutely. what am I buying? I don't know. And right. the containers, they're always like half dead anyway. Sadly. Too. Mm-hmm. So... So you yeah. mentioned wholesaling. Is that a really big aspect of Isotopia? It's it's probably like a third of it. Like, I mean, initially wow. I wasn't going to do that, but then I was like, well, if I'm going to do this, I want to be successful in it. This is what I do for a living. So I do the online sales. You know, I don't ship if it's 90 plus just because I don't want to kill my pods for yeah, no reason. Yeah, I, I see that online and, a You lot. know, like I'm confident in my shipping, but it's not worth the risk. Sure. You know, so we do the online shipping. We do the shows. I do the local pickups, as you know. Right. And then I do the wholesale. So it's a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> do you? How many stores do you wholesale to? A lot. That I mean, really not cool. not chains or anything, ma and pa's. Sure. So. And are all of these um, like local in Illinois? It's, it's going to be your state? whole Midwest area. No kidding. Mm-hmm. That is really cool. So, yeah, I mean that that's perfect. I always see. I always wonder where where do the ice pods come from when you go into those like reptile shops and i mean that that is smart though to diversify diversify mm-hmm. yourself in that way right how did you like do you just you know cold call them one day or is it relationships from being at so many shows and people know the isotopia brand to take some sort of like setup to make yourself kind of known 
in the hobby before I would say you ask people? It's more like, yeah, the name and stuff. Sure. Because we, you know, like when we first started, it was like a lot of more isopod heavy people. Okay. And then they dropped for whatever reason, you know. And we are we try to stay consistent. And we try to be very competitive with the prices. I like to boast that we're going to be your better selection of variety at every show. Because I, now I bring about like 45 to 50 species. Wow. I try to keep prices the lowest possible just so... I could be the one that people prefer. Okay. And I think that's the thing. Like, a lot of people know, like, when they were selling isopods, people would be like, I'll oh, just go to Isotopia now. So it's that's it's right. nice to have a nice reputation and get all that notoriety and be successful. So how do you keep the prices so low with, uh, I mean, amazing quality of service that you guys provide? It helps to not have an overhead because I still do everything at home. Sure. That's, that, that's For right now, that's that's the key. <laughs> What, what is it like? So maintenance-wise, I know for us, I mean, doing water dishes is always a nightmare for my mm-hmm. reptile room. And how do you how do you manage the, the upkeep of kind of your collection of isopods? I divide it up into thirds. Okay. So like one day I'll do one section, like several 50 to whatever bins. The next day I'll do the next, the next day the next. And it's a constant rotation That's that smart. way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that way you don't get, like, burnt out trying to do exactly. it all. Exactly. I'm not going to do, like, 200 bins in one night. I'd be like, oh, geez. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody could use probably a little bit, like, better scheduling because I, mm-hmm. I do my maintenance all all wrong and try to do it all at once. It's all about and, discipline, you know? Yeah, that is true. <laughs> Just do a little bit every day, and then you don't have to do it all right. at once. I mean, there's so. days I slack sometimes. I'm tired yeah, or sure. something, but I try to be consistent. And that, that goes with the whole quality because if they're being taken care of properly, then the customers can tell the difference, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I've been, I mean, more than pleased with, with everything I've got from you. All of Thank the isopods you. I've gotten are, are all alive, too. That's even awesome. to the point where, you know, and I've come back to you a few times, but mm-hmm. I mean, they're they're doing so well in their respective enclosures that I'm able to take from some of the enclosures thriving, and divvy yeah. it up with, with new enclosures. Mm-hmm. and That makes me so happy to hear. It's it's great. So, I mean, I'm really excited to see the offerings that you have at, at NARBC. I've never gone to the show so it's but i, be a lot of I fun, see you yeah. guys posting um all the time mm-hmm. on on social on social media some of your setups and yeah. so is there is there anything unveiling at um so do you have any so you say there's some animals you sell every few shows mm-hmm. is there anything like that for NARBC or i mean i'm gonna come heavy hitting so i'm gonna bring out all the cool things and that's cool. big numbers and uh, like every show truth be told i like to bring out a few new species and like the menu changes for every show because either you know we sell a lot and then numbers start to dwindle so i take them off for a few months okay so i'm gonna make sure that you know there's gonna be rubber duckies there <laughs> you sure, know for right? instance but yeah I'll, I'll pull out some stuff that i've never brought before and bring some things that people don't even know we have just because that's gonna be awesome this is a big show so we gotta it, gotta it make it looks bigger. like it's gonna be huge i mean mm-hmm. it is all over my social media and um i mean i'm i'm like really stoked to go so it's gonna be cool Ho- hopefully it's not um too hectic i love going to all those shows mm-hmm. the conventions are always so fun tinley i i, I don't get to go as often anymore because we're doing shows yeah. every weekend um but it's exciting that i can make an excuse to go to the oh yeah to the schomburg schomburg is like a baby tinley so yeah it's gonna be crazy in a good way <laughs> are you gonna are you gonna be tempted to buy anything at the shows probably just more isopods <laughs> there you go. or like you know i like to get my uvb bulbs because they do them much cheaper than the pet shops sure so that's always a time to stock up on nice. uh, supplies too so what do other isopod sellers would they sell to you or would they be like no way you know usually we do trades honestly oh like, really who, who doesn't love a good trade yeah you know? so i mean i've traded with so many people because like it, it's a community so sure. like obviously we're friends with a lot of people and stuff right. and it's nice to just have those relationships where we could all work together. That's great. What um? So with Istopia, where can they where can they find you? I know you guys are on a bunch of social media. I do Facebook, I do TikTok, and I do Instagram. TikTok I kind of don't do as frequently, but Facebook and Instagram are going to be our main ones. So Facebook and Instagram, we'll definitely have it up on the on the screen. Mm-hmm. So awesome. But cool, really excited. And so you got you have Schomber coming up, and you mentioned what was the other big show that you might? It's probably going to be the Janesville Show Me Show. Okay. And then I have to look at the schedule. What's coming up next? I think there's, um, I believe Ultimate Reptile Show was going to have one in the weekend after Schomburg, I think. So I'm looking into that one. How many shows do you schedule out? So you don't schedule it, out for the whole year necessarily. No, because you know, like with my child in school and like my husband's work schedule. It okay. could be very, because he works nights. So, like, for us, we could be ready in the morning. But for him, it's, like, double backing then. 
So yeah. depending on the location, that's why we're a little bit more selective of how we're doing things. Okay. So some planning has to go sure, into it. Sure, <laughs> sure. Yeah, that's just it. So, so Patty, I really appreciate you coming in and talking isopods with me. And we'll have this up on the screen, but for all your isopod needs, be sure to check out Isotopia. I mean, they have a great selection of animals. And, I mean, the quality is like no other. So I really appreciate you coming in today. I appreciate you having me. Thank you Thank so you. much.